right, 3.32 the time. Now, if you're just joining us, retired Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens is calling for the repeal. Are you sitting down? Driving in the slow lane? All right. Is calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. He says to allow for significant gun control legislation. I only mention this because it's a matter of public record. I'm not trying to... uh, you know, find the reason for his position in his age, but he's 97 years old. He wrote an essay for the New York Times website that repeal would weaken the NRA's ability to block constructive gun control legislation. Now, uh, as a an attorney in contracts, you know, I, I basically would take two sets of data, you know, here are the pros, here are the cons, and primarily for overseas companies. So as I read his statement, I started drilling. And as I said, it's like peeling an onion. The closer you get to the truth, the more your eyes begin to tear up peeling that onion. Um, And that's what I found. I think he is still, oh, it's one of two things. He has either lulled himself into the uber left movement agenda in this country, or he's still upset about a decision that was overturned many, many years ago. I think it's the latter. Um, How worried should gun owners be about this? Um, For perspective, we've got Emily Taylor. She's an independent program attorney with U.S. Law Shield. You probably heard of them. One of the country's leading voices on the Second Amendment. Uh, Ms. Taylor, thank you for being with me. Thank you for having me on. Um. I was surprised, you know, even joking about repealing the Second Amendment um, makes no sense. Um, I I think this uh, this retired Supreme Court justice is still stinging maybe from an overturned decision many years ago. I, I don't know. I would assume that. But how important is what he said, how relevant perhaps, Uh, in the hundreds of thousands of voting teenagers, because 90% of the participants on Saturday are of voting age, and the Democrats, not to be outdone, where, uh, you know, they had voter registration at every march. How how worried should gun owners, or should they be worried about this? Well, I do think that it's troubling, and I think that it's troubling because this is an extremist thing to say. It's an extremist position to take. And when the people who are already prone to that sort of anti-gun extremism hear that a retired Supreme Court justice has taken that position, it legitimizes it and it makes it uh, feel less radical. And I think that's a very dangerous thing that's just happened. No, I think you're right. I think it lends um, what would normally be written off as, uh, you know, someone that's uh, gone too far out on the limb or, you know, the anti-gun nuts, as they are called by some, uh, it lends credibility to that entire agenda. He said the Second Amendment is a relic of the 18th century. You know, that's, uh, that doesn't seem that uh, over the top to most people, but read that, that line over again several times, and it is scary. It is, in fact. And, you know, what Justice Stevens should know, perhaps what he did know at one point, is that the Second Amendment exists in order to hold up all of the other amendments without the citizenry being able to organize. And if we must overthrow our own government, that's what it's there for, without that ability, all of our rights are in jeopardy. And that's something that's unpleasant to think about. It's something that we haven't had to think about in the history of this country yet. But if you ask me, one of the reasons that we might not have had to think about that is because of the existence of the Second Amendment. Exactly. Exactly. I I couldn't agree more. Um, As I said, he was on the losing end, as you write, of that 2008 ruling. Uh, The NRA... To my, uh, to my recollection, has never been responsible for one single gun death in the United States. Um, it's almost as if someone or some organization sought him out. 
because he was on the losing end of that ruling um, that had to do uh, with the NRA. How did the NRA even get involved with this? Well, you know, and, and that is that's certainly something that's possible. But, yes, he was on the dissenting side of a D.C. versus Heller, which I think is probably still sticking in his mind. And that was an incredibly important decision for those of us who think the Second Amendment should be protected because that is what paved the way for, of course, McDonald versus city of Chicago. But those right. two cases combined are the first time the Supreme Court in a very long time had taken up this issue. And the majority, which, you know, you should wipe your brow because it was only a five justice majority said that the Second Amendment is an individual right. And think about how scary it is that there were four justices who disagreed with that <laughs> exactly. prospect. <laughs> exactly. Even being one of them. Yes, and I think absolutely it still stings. Absolutely, they blame the NRA. And it is just a mystery to me why I mean, it's, just, it's incredible to me that we're sitting in this space right now in 2018 having this conversation. Uh, exactly. I, I couldn't agree with you. I'm talking with Emily Taylor with U.S. Law Shield. Um, and if you don't know uh, much about that organization, the information's up on our website and, and whatnot. But um, Ms. Taylor, again, from the last uh, Florida shooter, well, first of all, you know, I've, I've got about a 10-minute recording of all these kids, and I call them kids, they're of voting age. 90% of the participants were of voting age. Um, they all say, you know, ban assault weapons, ban assault weapons. Well, we had that at one time, uh, and it didn't change anything. I mean, nothing. It was a zero-sum proposition. If, what was it, from 94 to whatever it was, um, and because of a pistol grip, collapsible, uh, collapsible stock, and a rail to put accessories on, that is the only reason. And it looks scary, I guess. Uh, that's the only reason they keep it's a loose, loosely used term. They're woefully uninformed, are they not? They are, and you know, people should keep in mind that violent crime and gun deaths were actually higher during that assault weapons ban than they are now. Of course, not only that, but there is um, you know, no such thing as an assault weapon, and there's no <laughs> true definition of that. And, and this 2018 bill actually seeks to classify many items as assault weapons, that, uh, as many as they can, essentially. And it's, it is a, it's a scary bill that will not reduce violent crime, will not reduce gun death. It will do nothing more than make it more difficult for law-abiding gun owners to have the guns that they want. And it really, the assault weapons issue, if I can get on a soapbox for just 30 sure. seconds, yeah. is difficult for me to comprehend, particularly when the anti-gun left say things like the founding fathers, right, which apparently this, this the Second Amendment is a, is, a, is a relic of the founding fathers. They say the founding fathers could never have imagined an oh, assault yeah. weapon. They oh, could yeah. never have imagined AR-15. It shouldn't apply to that. Let us not forget that a musket was the assault weapon of the day. They wanted the citizenry to have exactly what the government was using. They wanted them to have the powerful weapons. It translates today just as it translated when it was written. There is no difference. Yeah, very good point. Good point. Emily Taylor, U.S. Law Shield. First of all, I appreciate you joining me on such short notice, but I had no idea that a retired justice was going to call for the repeal of the Second Amendment. If people want more information from you, uh, uh, Ms. Taylor, how do they go about it? www.uslawshield.com is a great way to get started. You can take a look at what U.S. Law Shield has to offer. And that will direct you, if you'd like to learn more, to some U.S. Law Shield seminars on gun law, on gunshot wound first aid, on surviving active shooters. There's all sorts of wonderful education available to you there. Uh, i, I got to share this with you. It's, it's funny. I used to shoot tournament skeet when my kids were growing up. My daughter had no no interest whatsoever. I don't care about guns. I don't. And, of course, I have a lot of law enforcement in my family. Well, you know, she ends up going to law school and ends up uh, marrying a, a police officer. Of course, he was in the military at the time they got together. But 
Um, I got something from her. Uh, the first of the year, she her birthday came around, and her husband, as I said, is a canine officer for a pretty large police department, and he got her a pink camo AR, and she said, "Look, Dad, it's a pink AR. Now will they not call it an assault rifle?" It it was it was hysterical, sort of an inside joke, but I said, "No, it's they're still going to call it an assault rifle, and there is no such such thing." Um, but you can find all of that out and a whole lot more at U.S. Law Shield. Emily Taylor, thank you for being with me. Thanks for having me. All right, 3.43 the time. We'll do a little business back with your calls. Yeah, retired Justice John Paul Stevens. Yeah, he set off a firestorm. <laughs> Repeal the Second Amendment, you think? Oh, by the way, don't let me forget Uh, In just a little bit, I'm going to take you and drop you right in the middle of uh, March for Our Lives on Saturday. You tell me if you can make sense of anything. 